Hey everyone, it's Jack, and today I'm going to take a look at Arco Linux Extended. Extended, wow, that's something that I've never messed with before. Arco Linux, this is from the Beeline series, and Extended actually features 14 different window managers. Wow, so you have 14 different choices of desktop experiences that you can have here. So I am really curious to try this. I've been messing with Arco Linux for years, and... In all those years, I've never tried or looked at Extended. So I'm going to download this right now and just get right into it and see what it's like. Okay, and here we are. We're in the desktop. I mean, in the boot screen here on the live version. So I'm just going to get booted right in here and take a look at this. I'm assuming this is probably going to boot into something like Openbox is probably the default window manager. If you can access all 14 of these right from the live version, that's even cooler because you can kind of check out all these different desktop environments even before you get into an install. So it looks like we got our environment getting ready to load here. And we're coming in and things are rendering excellent. So we should see our environment here any second now. And there it is. Excellent. So we're loading in. And wow. Yes. Looking good. Here we got our different things. And if I right click. Yes. I can see that we have a right click menu here. So here we got our installer screen and so forth and our initial welcome. So that's nice to see. And we can even update our Arch Linux mirrors right from the start. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the easy installation offline here. I found from my own personal experience, that's really the most straightforward, easiest way to go. And I believe this is just going to ins install all 14 desktops as well. So I'm going to hit next here because I want to check them all out. I'm going to do a quick run through on all of them, I think, just so we can see what they're all like. A lot of them I've never messed with before. I'm just going with the defaults here and then I'm going to select uh, not manual. I'm going to go with erase disk. But the other options are available if you want to do something manually. And then we'll select swap to file, I guess, just to give us a little bit of swap space there. Then I'll hit next and then we'll go in with a username. And this is all pretty straightforward, the Calamary's installer. So nothing you probably haven't seen a hundred times before. And I'll select use same password for administrator. And then I'll hit next. And that should do it. That's easy peasy for the install. I'm just going to hit install here to confirm all the changes. And that's it. So I'm going to let it do its thing and I'll be back when it's done. So that was easy. Excellent. So I'm just going to let it restart. And then if everything went okay, we'll be able to check out these environments. Okay, here we are at our boot screen. So everything went just fine. And it looks like by default, we got Qtile Wayland. I don't think this is really equipped for Wayland. So I doubt that's going to work. But look at all these other window managers. Wow. But just as here is satisfied by curiosity. I'll try the Wayland. But here we got, yeah, tons of stuff. Worm and Dusk and Chad WM. Things I've never really heard of before. So I'm going to log in here just to see if the Qtile Wayland, what that does. Uh if anything, and it looks like it's not going to go if anything. So I think that's not going to work. Yeah, it just kind of froze up. So I'm just going to go and restart this VM here and uh, choose something more palatable. Okay, I'm restarted now. And so I'm back in. And so I'm just going to, I guess I'll just go right down the line because we have all these to choose from. So let's start out with awesome. That looks awesome. And I'm not real familiar with a lot of these environments. So I'm just going to hit log in here, see what we get. And there's our awesome desktop. And yeah, look nice. We got a top bar here and even a calendar pop up. That is cool. And ah, it's scrolling through too when I right click. Nice. And when I left click, it goes the other way. That is cool. So I'm liking that, the calendar. Very cool. I don't see pop-up calendars very often in these window managers. Um, I know you can install them separately on some but yeah looking cool and then here we got our variety so we got wallpaper settings here and that's our wallpaper selector so i like seeing that that's in there by default and we can just easily select our different backgrounds right here from within the app i'm liking that too and it looks like a bottom bar there too as well so we can just kind of scroll through here that looks like a kind of an interesting wallpaper maybe i'll select that just hit super two to get to the other desktop and then there we go so nice that looks good i like that for a background i think i'll keep that so i'm going with that 
And then now I'm back on our first desktop and we got updates too. So here's our Pam Mac updater and we got our volume icon. You can just middle click or scroll with your mouse and adjust that. And let's take a look at our updates. So it's got a bunch of updates that are available. And I usually like to get those out of the way as well, just so we can say they're done. Because if we install anything, you should have your updates run anyway. But we won't let that interfere. I like the round buttons up there too for the different workspaces. So I'm just going to authenticate here and just kind of run this and let it do its thing. But I won't let it interfere too much through the magic of video. This will be done in a second. So we'll hit close and let that proceed. So if I click over here to another workspace like Workspace 2, for example... We can get a clear look at this conky, and this conky here has all the different keyboard bindings, the main stuff, you know, all the survival stuff here to kind of get you through. I'm, there's more key bindings, but right now I just hit Control, uh, Super, Super Enter, and that opens up Alacrity. And also, you have the option to hit Super T, and that'll bring up the other terminal, which is the... Uh, uh, UR, UX, VRT, or something like that. I always forget those letters, but, you know, it's another terminal. <laughs> uh, I kind of prefer alacrity between the two, though. But let's just take a look and kind of see our layouts here. See our menu options. So, again, I kind of lost my wallpaper for some reason. I'm just going to select one again real quick. So, let me click this and pop over. And there we go. We got it rendering now. And beautiful background. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to keep that. And then I press Control uh, Super D to get our Rofi menu here. And looking good. Really like the way it's themed out. Very nice. So I am liking that. Super D for that D menu. And then we got uh, our Arco Linux. And I'm just going to bring these up to look at our layouts. So here I got three instances of Alacrity open. You can see them in the lower bar here in the status bars which is nice so i kind of like that too i like the dual look and here we can you can tell we got the master and stack layout here uh, for our default and then we even have a selector down there in the corner which is cool i think i'm going to open up this guy too and you can see it's floating because i selected the floating layout so that is cool you can't really move around the alacrity in floating mode i've kind of noticed so but you can with the other things and then reverse the stack and then you got the master on top and four in horizontal on the bottom and then in reverse so lots of cool layouts and then a maximum layout there and then back again and you can cycle through those as well so very nice. And then back to our floating. And of course, right now I got our tune hour floating. And then we can select our, actually, this is the magnifier. This is the magnifier. So you can just select each one and it'll bring it up to the front. Nice. And then back to the master and stack default. So yeah, that's kind of awesome there. No wonder they call it awesome. And I like the fact that you can right click on awesome too and access a menu. That's as easy as hopping over to another desktop and just right clicking and there you go you got the menu nice so really nice looking right click menu too so you get easy access here and again if you're new with window managers uh, you have an easy access to a menu that you can choose from without even having to use a keystroke so instead of using super d or super shift d you can also uh, just right click here and awesome and get access to a right click menu it has access to all the different apps installed. We got Genie here. And Genie is one of my favorite text editors. I like seeing that, that that's installed by default. So very cool there. Thumbs up. Excellent. And then here we got under our graphics, it's using Ristretto. And we got Firefox in here installed as our default browser, it looks like. And then we got our multimedia stuff, system tools. And all the cool things you'd expect. There's HTOP. If I click that, that should launch HTOP and show us our resource usage. Although you can see it right there in the conky anyway. But, you know, and it doesn't look like HTOP actually launched from the menu there. So, yeah, maybe it's not installed. Well, actually, it's got to be installed because the icon's there. I'll just try that again. Hmm. So let's, I did a super enter 
and just going to type it in. So yeah, it's installed. I just uh, brought it up manually and it looks fine. So right now it's 1.1 gigs, 1.2. That's kind of high. It's probably because all this other stuff's running in the background. I got all these open and then the updater's running as well. So I guess I could lighten the load here a bit. But as long as that updater is running, it's probably going to be a little on the high side anyway. But I'm thinking I'm going to be coming back to awesome anyways at a later point. But that uh, didn't change too much. I think it has a lot to do with the updates. And looks like there's some minor error messages there with the key ring. Nothing that can't be fixed with their utility. But I'm doing a restart here. And now we're back in. And everything looks fine. And our memory usage is back down around 3, 591, I think it is. So let's do a sudo pacman syu and just see if there's anything missed in the updates or if those errors were ignorable. And yes, everything is completed. So yeah, benign errors, nothing to worry about at all. Looking great. So got that out of the way. Everything went pretty smooth. And our resource usage is back down. It's showing around 748 on the RAM. And back into the PAMAC again our package manager. And so here we got things, recommended softwares, and it's showing that Firefox is installed already. But we got Inkscape, LibreOffice. None of these are installed by default here, the Office suite and so forth. And there's VLC player. I noticed we didn't have a media player installed yet. So I'm just going to run that too. And we'll just install that through the PAMAC installer, make sure it works okay. So I'm going to hit that authenticate and then here's optional dependencies and I'm good with optional dependencies I would probably choose pretty much all of these so I think I will I'll just click away and then kwallet I think I'll leave that out I don't really need that that's kind of unnecessary but all the rest I'll choose and we'll just let that install and let it do its magic while it's installing and there we go so everything went fine I'm gonna hit apply and then that installs, or will install, the rest of the app. And everything went fine. Successful transaction. So we'll just scroll down a little bit more. And uh, I think I'll run over to desktop 2 and just do super D. And just take a look for VLC. So I'm going to type that in the search window. And there it is. So it looks like it went in just fine. I'm going to click that and hit continue to accept the meta stuff. And then here on our about, it shows that we're running 3.0.20 Veterinary. So that's the latest and greatest version of VLC player, and it installed just fine. So now we're covered on playing media. And this is a really comfortable environment. I like this awesome. I could see myself using this, actually. Awesome is very comfortable. So I'm logging out right now, and let's explore some more. So what's next? We got BSPWM, and that's actually what I run right now. I daily drive BSPWM, the Arco Linux. And so this environment here, to me, is very familiar. It's Python-based. And so here we got our top bar, our volume control, and so forth our kernel, and then our different desktop environments. Here they're designated instead of by numbers, by icons, which is cool. So this is like the fourth workspace and just opening things up. And I can see the layouts are different than the just the regular master and stack. Here we got the master with a, and then I am super shift to go through the different ones. And that was the floating. And then we got our max and then back to uh, our, I don't know what you would call that. I'm not as seasoned as some people when it comes to window managers, but I'm getting there. I'm still a bit of a hack though. So again, super spacebar is scrolling through the different layouts. This one I think is the magnify layout. Again, when you click on a window, it kind of brings it front and center and then back to the beginning again. So in all these window environments, I believe you can just simply super space to scroll through them. The keyboard layouts seem to be pretty much the same on the con key here. So, so far I'm not seeing any real difference. That's good. I'm glad to see that. I want to see uh, things kind of standardized instead of having to remember different key bindings for everything. So the next one is Chad WM. So I'm going to get in there and see how that looks. And so, wow, this is kind of a cool looking layout too. So this is Chad. And I kind of like the bar up there. That looks nice. And so here we got our volume control again, our clock. And if you click on it, no calendar. So the past two window managers, no calendar pop up, only awesome so far. So that's one thing I'm really liking with the awesome. 
And there's our volume control clicking on these guys. So these must be like our group icons that open up uh, specific apps that might be tied to it. There's our USB writer. Nice. And the airplane thing doesn't really do anything. That might be a mail client or something, which is likely not configured in the config file, which would be in your dot config folder. And then we got our desktops again, and they are displayed by symbol. So here we got our layouts again, super space bar to scroll through them. There's our master stack default. And then that's the tab right there. So I like that. We got tabs up here and we can kind of cycle through with the tabs. I'm liking that. Very cool. So that's a feature that I am liking here in this Chad WM. This is a really a nice looking environment. I like the bar too. I don't know if that's using Polybar or a bar that's with Chad WM. And wow, we even got a preview. So that's cool too. I like the mouse over preview. I really haven't personally seen that on any other window manager. So I think that's a really nice touch. I like it. Thumbs up for that. So there we go. I'm already learning some new things. And of course, I'm just kind of running through these quickly because there's a ton of window managers to choose from. And if I took too long on each one, we'd be here for five hours. All right, so let's log out. And go to the next one. So Chad WM, that was cool. This one's called Dusk. Again, I'm not familiar with it, so I'm going to log in. And it does look like Dusk. It's kind of dark, and the bar has this kind of Nord kind of feel to it. And we'll close our startup welcome. And yeah, it looks nice. Uh, and here again, now we got numbered workspaces as opposed to the icons. So that's cool. We'll just open a bunch of stuff here to see our layout. And so we got our master stack again at the star. And then if I do super space bar, it didn't really do anything. So let me come over here and I just did a control alt M and that brings up the system settings dialog there. So we have access to all these settings. And I just jumped into the icons here because I was exploring and I went into system settings and I changed the icons. However, I had paused temporarily and then I thought I unpaused, but I didn't. So I did a bunch of recording for nothing. So I ended up having to go back and restart all over again and repeat everything that I did while it was paused when I thought I was recording. Jeez. Anyway, so I got the icons and I changed the icons uh, before. So I would kind of want to let you know where I went. And so in the menu here under icons, I got down here and I selected the Sardi icons to get a different look here. So like if I go back here to our file manager, that's why the icons look different now because they're orange and that's what the deal is. So I got in here and this is nice because you can go and select all these icons. They change right on the fly here. I can't really slide that over because it's not floating. But I like the fact that you can just kind of click through these and they just right on the fly change. There's our A Candy beauty line type icons and then we got our Sardi flexible. Oh, nice shade of blue there. And a lot of things to choose from. The theming is really set up nice here where you can just have a whole variety of stuff. And I really like choices. And this seems to be all about choice. So that's always going to score points with me. And another nice shade of blue. Here we got Surf and Love Red. And that's a nice red color there. And then Surf and Orange. I'm liking that shade of orange too. Very cool. And the surfing vertex, but I think I'm, I like the surfing theme, but surfing orange looks cool too. But yeah, the surfing new mix, I kind of like that the best. So I'm kind of leaning towards that, even though there's Dracula. I didn't notice that before. And then of course our standard breeze dark, but I'm going to go with surfing new mix, I think. Because that just kind of works for me. So here in our settings, we got show images on buttons and show images on menus. And so you can turn those off if you don't like images on your buttons. I do though. And then all these other great things here are Arch Linux Tweak Tool, which is one of my favorite tools here on Arco Linux. And so any kind of configuring you got to do, you got easy access to just by pressing Control Alt M as in micro. So here we go. This is our Linux tweak tool, which is just awesome. You got auto start settings. Uh, you can install different desktops. You got design here, different themes and icons. There's our desktop installer I was talking about before. So if you wanted to add even more desktops, you could do that here, like deepen and 
enlightenment, GNOME, and so forth. So that's kind of cool, even Hyperlint. And if I was going to attempt Hyperlint on here, I would probably install Sway first and get your Wayland kind of straightened out. But anyway, onward and upward. And then here we have our fixes. Fixes is a big deal in this software, and they address the fixes really well here with the tweak tool. So if you run into keyring issues and things like that, trying to update. And then our grub menu, that's our boot splash, so to speak. And then we got our login settings and we're using SDDM by default, but here you can go to LightDM and install it if you wish or LXDM and so forth. But of course, I'd want to stick with the SDDM in this case, especially if you ever decided to use a Wayland window manager, you'd want to have SDDM on here. Here's our Pac-Man settings. And typically, I just kind of stick with the default. And then our themer, this is cool. I just noticed that. So here we got our awesome desktop where we were in before. And you can actually change the different themes and we can kind of preview them here in this little preview window. Wow, that looks cool. I like that. So I might have to jump back into awesome here just to kind of look at some of those. And then the themer also works for i3, left WM, and Qtile. I am liking it very much. That's impressive. So let's log out again and press on because we're only at the D's. So there's Dusk and let's jump to DWM next. DWM, that looks kind of tough to set up. So I like the fact that we got something already pre-configured uh, because to me, that looks like it'd be pretty time consuming to build this from scratch. <laughs> uh, probably not for the faint of hearts. So I clicked on the clock there and it brought up the task manager, it looks like. So no calendar there. I'm not sure really why it's bringing up the task manager, but that's all right. And then again, we got our con key here. I don't see anything related to layout there. Oh yeah, there we are. That's there. Okay. So let's look at our layouts and here again, master stack. So that seems to be pretty standard kind of, but now we got like a grid look there and then our full screen max and then back to master stack. So that's kind of cool. And DWM looks uh, pretty minimal, but seems zippy too. We're looking at about 611 megs of RAM there. That's not bad. And then of course our volume control, we can scroll that up and down. So that appears, that little widget, when you scroll your mouse wheel. Looks like I need to mouse over it and then hit escape there or control Q to get rid of that. Super Q, not control. And so let's go to our next one. Mm, you know, I think I'm going to go back to awesome here just real quick because I want to see that theme switcher. I can't wait. <laughs> so I'm going to quit or not quit. I'm going to go out and go back into the tweak tool using this welcome screen. And let's switch some themes and see how this theme switcher works. Does it switch on the fly or what? So got to see. Going to jump down here. Here's our themer. So we're in awesome. So that's good. So this is our default apparently is the colors, multicolors. So I'm going to select something else like hmm, maybe Copeland. And then we got Blackburn, which is the top one. I like that wallpaper. That's kind of cool. So I just hit apply and I'm going to jump up out of the way here. So that applied our theme and it kind of looks the same to me. So yeah, I'm not thinking it really did anything. So I'm going to go back to our desktop here and uh, Copeland, apply. Don't see any change. That doesn't look like the window there. Reload your window. Super Shift R. Oh, okay. I guess it pays to follow directions. So Super Shift R. There we go. All right. Excellent. Just my ignorance. So now we have a different layout here. Theme. That is cool. I like that. So that was a very fast, easy theme switch. <laughs> and then here we got our... Our layout selector, I like that too. Nice, right up there in the corner, upper left. And so I need to go back into the tweak tool. I think it's still open. All I got to do is select it there, I guess. And so let's take a look at Blackburn. So again, apply theme, super shift R, and there we are. Now we're in the Blackburn theme. Very nice. I like it. So now we got cooler glyphs there for our different desktop spaces. Actually, the background's the same though. So I was kind of thinking that background image was going to appear with it because I really like that background image, uh, but I didn't see that in the variety, but it's probably on there somewhere. But that would be even cooler if the image came along with it, with the preview there. <laughs> one for the suggestion box. So let's take a look at this one. 
This is our power arrow. So now we got the arrow look up here. Nice. And then there's our pop-up calendar when you hover over. And then different variations of the arrow like blue. And here we have the dark theme, which looks nice. And so I guess I'll look at the dark real quick because the blue just kind of looks about the same except blue. <laughs> so here we go with the dark and I'm liking the dark. That looks good too. So if you like the arrow style theme, that's another cool choice as well. Very nice. And then again, of course, our widgets up here, um, all pretty much in the same order, I think, except we have our calendar at the end and then our layout selector there. Very nice. So that's our themer. And then, of course, if we get into i3, left WM, Qtile, wow, there's a ton of themes here for i3. That's uh, pretty impressive. Wow. <laughs> and you can even toggle the poly bar. So on some of those themes, apparently you can replace your default bar with a poly bar if you don't have the poly bar on there already. Some window managers don't have a bar, so you'll have poly bar by default. However, on those that you have a choice, it looks like you can switch back and forth. So I like that. Awesome. So now let's go to Herbstluft WM and see what that's like. And so here's Herbstluft. And uh, so far, it kind of looks like, uh, yeah, kind of like my BSPWM install. Very nice uh, looking. And actually on my BSPWM Arco install, I changed it to numbers like this. So very much resembles it. Looks like our default layout here is a horizontal, uh, horizontally laid out columns. I'm liking that. That looks nice, actually. Very cool. And then we got our magnify, I guess, and then a grid, and then a vertical stack of rows, and back to our horizontally laid out column. <laughs> and I guess this is the magnify. I was looking to see if there were like uh, tabs, but I don't see those. So I guess you would use a keyboard stroke to kind of tab through those uh, when you're in this mode here. The grid layout's very nice. I like that. Very everything sized equally, and they adjust accordingly as you back out. Very cool. And here again, pretty reasonable resource usage on the Conky. So let's log out and go to the next one. Here we got i3 and i3 debug mode apparently, which is handy if you need to debug something. But we'll just go into standard i3, and then we'll close out of that. And so we'll check out our layout here and see how this looks. So again, master stack, but I really didn't, let me check and see. Yeah, I'm not seeing any layout here. Uh, so the, the super space bar didn't really work. I can't really cycle through any layouts. So maybe that's the only layout that's configured for this. So maybe that's the only layout. I just open up my web browser here, super B, to kind of see what we got here. So we're running Firefox 119. Nice. The newest one is the version of as of the time of building. So yeah, I guess your layout uh, option isn't available on this one. And I'm not really sure if that's because there's nothing configured in the config or if it's something else. And then if we go into our D menu here, we could actually open our welcome screen back up, jump into the tweak tool, and let's take a look at some of our themes. And again, I'm not familiar with i3. I've never really messed with it. But let's see what we can theme with it because I remember this being in the themer. So we can scroll down here and select something like that. Our mastermind. Cool. Nice name. And then we got pinky, another cool one. And then we can toggle our pally bar. So apparently that'll switch it from the i3 bar or whatever you would call it. So yeah, there we go. There's our poly bar. Now it kind of has the BSPWM look too, which also uses poly bar, of course. And so no calendar app there. And then we got our pinky outline. So I guess that's why they call it pinky. Cool. And then if we turn off our toggle poly bar and go down and apply that and then refresh super shift R and reload it, then the poly bar goes away and we go back to our normal bar, which is at the bottom, by the way, uh, for our i3 setup. So you can also just toggle your bar. I like it. So yes, works very nice. Going to jump out of here and check out the next one. So after i3, we got left WM. So I'm just going to, again, log in. And here we are. That's kind of a cool background. I like the wallpaper there. It's kind of unique. And now it switched back to what we had switched it to in the variety. So it took over now. And we got kind of a transparent look there. Nice. And so left WM looks pretty nice. Here I got a couple versions of 
alacrity open three versions. So again, it looks like we got our horizontal columns stretched horizontally across there. Very good. Um, I'm not getting anything when I super space though. So yeah, again, you can't switch layouts. So apparently left WM is not configured here for multiple layouts. And I, but I see it on the, I saw it on the conky though. So yeah, strange, but let's go on our tweak tool again, jump in and change the theme in, on here. Cause I remember seeing left WM is one of our window managers as well. And it looks like a lock file was found. So I'm just going to say yes to undo the lock file. And then I think I just got to click it again. And this time it should work. Apparently it was still locked from last time. Maybe it didn't clear out in the session. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to hit my themer. Select left and WM. And so candy is a default here. And that's a nice theme actually. So if we select something else, just some random thing like this guy, double bar. And theme not installed. So apparently I got to hit install here. And that should install and copy the selected theme. Nice. And so... Still says theme not installed. Maybe it didn't install. Let's click that again. And I'm not really getting any response here. So to me, it doesn't look like it's really installing. So yeah, I guess we can't really, the installer part doesn't seem to be working. I'll just try that one more time. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's find something that is installed. So I'll just click on something else and not installed. Okay. Well, we already know the routine there, so I'm just going to click through, and I'll just try it again on a different theme. Nothing. So I don't think we're going to have a lot of luck here with themes on the left WM anyway. So yeah, I don't know really what the deal is there. So I guess the themer is not really a thing on less WM, at least not at this point, or it could be a temporary bug that might be corrected in an update. Hard to say. But it looks like none of these are installed here. So yeah, I think I'll just kind of write off the whole theme thing here for left WM. <laughs> oh, well, that was worth a shot. So coming back here, we'll just kind of super cue out of both of those. And then that's a cool wallpaper, though. I kind of like that. That's cool. I'll just hit our log out because the super X didn't seem to work either. So now we got open box next, and then after that, Q tile. So open box, I think, was the default when we went into the live version. I'm not sure. Not sure I really checked that, but here's our open box, and again, using polybar. And open box is a floating window manager. So if you kind of like the window manager thing, but you want everything to be floating, you can do that right here. And I also had the right click menu and I selected the Thunar here via right click. And so you can see that all these windows float. So no tiling. And so you can just kind of do everything. And I even Alacrity will float here. And of course, you got your window buttons as well, which you don't see in the other window managers in the tiling. So this is really geared towards floating. And so open box can be a really cool option for people that kind of like the window manager philosophy, but they really want to stick with floating windows. And so this kind of answers that or even help you transition. And of course, you got your right click menu here so you can choose all kinds of things. And I'm going to turn on the conky because it wasn't on by default. And so we got different information on the conky, probably because open box is not really keyboard dependent. You can really do everything through the mouse if you wish. So yes, although the keystrokes work just fine, keyboard shortcuts, or it's just some other reason. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to quit the welcome screen there. Excellent. So let's log out again. Again, I pressed super X to log, get our logout screen there, our power screen. So here we got Spectre WM and log in. And let's take a look at that and see what this is like. So again, we got our poly bar, but this time our desktops are spelled out the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. So cool. And then our usual widgets over here, uh, just like in the other window managers. So a very familiar scene. No conkeys again, uh, for some reason. Quite all right. So here we're over on the desktop too, and I just open up Thunar, super shift enter, and then super enter to open up Alacrity. And so the Spectre WM, very cool, but it's kind of freaking out there. Uh, so actually running my super spacebar to switch layouts kind of crashed it. 
So yeah, um, I guess if you're in this window manager, you don't want to switch layouts. I guess I'm just going to have to reboot this because I can't even get out with Control Super X. So I rebooted, and so I'm back in again, and let's just move on to the next one. Worm, Spectre didn't really go anywhere. So this is Worm, and actually it looks kind of nice. With a name like Worm, I was thinking it was going to look kind of wormy, but it doesn't. It looks great. So again, we got our poly bar up here. We got numbered workspaces. There's there's our kernel in the middle there, version. So that's all looking nice. And all our desktops, nine. So we're running version 6.5.9, our kernel, which is easily viewable right there in the middle. And then again, clicking on the calendar doesn't do anything. So poly bar is not really set up for a calendar pop-up widget. Although you can go out on GitHub and get a calendar. I think it's called Pop-Up Calendar, something like that, uh, that's available for Polybar. And it's just an add-on that you can put in your Polybar config easily. So we got our master stack here as our default. So that's looking good. So Worm it looks like a pretty comfortable window manager here. So change layout again is super spacebar, but didn't seem to be working. So I'm just going to kind of close those out. Uh, so I can't really switch through layouts here. So again, it may not be configured uh, for multiple layouts. I'm only speculating, but I'm kind of assuming that's what the case is here. That not all the window managers are configured for multiple layouts. But for all I know, they don't support multiple layouts, but I think they probably should. <laughs> so what do we got left? We got Xmonad. So I'm going to jump down here and take a look at Xmonad. I've messed with this a few times, especially through DT's DTOS, which uh, featured Xmonad in some of his earlier versions there. So here we got our, looks like Polybar again, uh, as opposed to Xmobar. So that is cool. And then here's our layout, master stack by default. And then our Thunar, and if we cycle through here, super space bar, looks like we get a lot of different layouts here. So I don't know what the name of all these layouts are, but one of them is probably called the X, I forgot what they call it, X Monat Tall or something like that. <laughs> um, and that that is a nice layout. That's kind of my favorite one. It was the default uh, on DTOS. And assuming it's probably the default here. And then again, our Conky, our resource usage is good. It looks like about 509 megs. And so that is very efficient. And Xmonad is Haskell-based. So if you know your way around Haskell, then it's a pretty robust window manager. And, you know, I don't think I looked at Qtile. I did select the Wayland right at the beginning there, which didn't work. But let's go into regular Qtile. I think I skipped over that. So I'm going to log in here real quick and check out Qtile. This is a window manager I really like, something I've used before. Really nice to configure and so forth. And this is running the Monad Tall. And again, we got icons for our different workspaces. And then if we do our layout here, we got the master stack Monad Tall there by default. And we can see the layout. So I like that. And you can also click on them here to change. So matrix, I guess that's what that grid thing is called. Then we got our horizontal bars and then our floating. So I guess I can grab that, but it's really not going anywhere, even though it says floating, but probably my ignorance. And then we got our max settings for our maximum windows and back to Monad Tall. Very cool. Yeah, if I remember right in Qtile, I think you got to actually, on the floating there, hold down your super key and then drag it. So that's all you got to do there. I do recall that from when I had Qtile installed. And then, of course, our volume control. Again, you can scroll your middle mouse there and it kind of spawns that widget, which is cool. I like it. So yes, Qtile. So now we know what that looks like. So yeah, a lot of these uh, do look a lot alike, but I, I would say the major underlying difference is probably the config files and the different languages. Some are Python based, you got Haskell based with the Xmonad, and some are using Bash, I believe, style scripting, probably like in DWM, I think. I probably couldn't begin to tell you what every single config file was written in unless I jumped in there and took a look. But really, once you master one language, then all the rest of them are pretty easy to, to pick up on. Uh, that's one thing I found out. 
through my years of programming and hacking around on computers. But I am really liking this. I think I'm ready for my two cents. And I got to say, this extended version is cool. In fact, this actually might be the, the thing that I would kind of install in the future, just because I think it's cool to have access to all those different window managers to play with. I actually wouldn't really mind having all of those installed all on one daily driver machine. They don't seem to interfere with each other at all. So everything is very clean. Uh, the config files, of course, the way Arco has them set up, everything is modular in the configs. And so nothing overlaps with anything else or conflicts. And I like that. That seems very smooth. Um, Spectre seemed to be the only one that really kind of messed up there. <laughs> that kind of freaked out and locked up the whole VM. And maybe that's related to the VM and not so much the uh, maybe it would act different on hardware. I don't know. But I do know one thing. I really like this extended. This is an ISO I'm going to keep around. And the next time I got to redo my machine, I'm putting on extended so I can have easy access to all these. Of course, if you don't and you're running Arco, you can use the Arco tweak tool. You can even download it if you're just running straight up Arch and use the desktop installer and do the same thing, actually, I'm assuming. You could probably add in uh, a lot of these different window manager environments, depending on your configuration, maybe even your hardware. So overall, I got to say, I love this. This is great. I mean, I would absolutely put this on a computer and just have all 14 of them. I believe in the advanced mode when you're installing, you can go in the advanced mode and just pick and choose your desktops and it should only install the ones that you specify. But I use the simple mode, which is really what I prefer. And it just gave me everything. Didn't have to mess with it. And then there you go. You just got them all set up. And the fact that you can run window managers like DWM without having to start from scratch, I think is great. Now, some people might argue that starting from scratch is really the best way to learn. And yeah, I definitely see the merits in that as well, because if you're going to, if you want to know everything there is to know about cars and you had to build one from scratch, you'd probably know everything about them. Uh, but for me, that's too much headache. I'd rather have something already built and then take it apart and see how it works. I guess that goes back to when I was a kid and I would like take apart radios to see how they worked or VCRs and just kind of dissect them and see what makes them tick. And I get the same kind of fun out of window managers as well that are already pre-configured. I can go into a Python config file or Haskell config, whatever, and just kind of look at it, reverse engineer it, find out what sections control what, where you get your window rules and your key bindings and all that, and just kind of just kind of dissect it, I guess. So that's kind of me. That's my style, and I like it, and I definitely give this Arco Linux Extended a double thumbs up. Absolutely. I love it. So there you go. I hope you found this first look helpful, and if you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and hit subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.